Tomorrow we have our test over equations and inequalities. Let's get started with question number one. It says, which graph shows the solution to the following inequality? So that means we need to solve it. That's on page 33 of your notebook. So to solve an inequality or an equation, you want to get the variable by itself. So we want to get m by itself, which means we need to get rid of the minus 4. We get rid of minus 4 by using plus 4 to cancel it out. So that's going to get, go away leaving just m is less than, that we keep that same symbol. Over here we have different signs, so we find the difference, which is 2. We have more positives, so it's going to be positive 2. So m is less than 2. So when we have no line, we want no mouth guards. We don't want these closed in circles, which means b and c are not our answer. Okay, now a is shaded to the right. D is shaded to the left. Think of it as an arrow. Okay, that arrow is pointing us in the direction we need to shade, and it's pointing to the left. So we don't want this, because that would be greater than. So our answer for number one is D. Question number two is about something very similar. So this is also on page 33, because we're solving and graphing. So we want to get Y by itself. We need to get rid of the negative 4, and we can cancel that out with positive 4, because that's going to be 0 pairs. So that leaves us with just y is less than or equal to different signs we find the difference, which is 3. We have more negatives this time, so it's negative 3. Okay, so let's graph that. This time we do have a line. So instead of an open circle, if it has a line, it needs a mouth guard, so we color it in but it's still pointing to the left. So on this one, we're still going to be shading to the left. Okay. Question number three is a real world equation problem. You can find these on page 28. So Marie got a haircut last weekend. After cutting off three inches, the length of her hair was 12 inches. Which of the following equations could be used to find X? And that is the original length of her hair. So I like to figure out what X would actually be, and that kind of helps me. So if, if I know she got 3 inches cut off and now she's got 12 inches of hair, that means she must have started with 15 inches. Because if I had 15 and I cut off 3, now I would have 12. So down here, everywhere where I see an X, I like to plug in 15. Now, I don't see anything in the problem that makes me think it's multiplication, but just in case, I like to try it out. 3 times 15 would give me 45, not 12. So that's not my answer. Um, this one I'm going to come back to because cutting off does make me think of subtraction. So that's a maybe, but I'm going to come back to that. I don't think it's adding, but let me try. So 15 plus 3, that would give me 18, not 12. So that's not true. Okay, so I'm left with two subtraction ones. So 15 minus 3 does give me 12. So I think that's my answer. But let me just double check over here. 12 minus 15 would actually give me negative 3, not positive 3. It also doesn't make sense with the problem because that would be if she had 12 inches of hair, then she cut off 15 inches of hair, which isn't even possible because she didn't have that much. Um, and then even if it was, it would be a negative number. We can't have a negative amount of hair. That doesn't make sense either. So again, this one, she had 15, she cut off 3, now she has 12. That makes the most sense. Question number four is about inequalities. This is going to be found on page 32. A sign outside the movie theater states you must be a minimum of 18 years of age to see an R-rated movie without an adult present. Write an inequality to represent A, the age you must be to view an R-rated movie without an adult. Okay, so I told y'all that you want to circle your variable because you're going to be using that. You want to circle your number because you're going to be using that. And then you want to underline your inequality language. So in this case, it's minimum, minimum of 18. So that means you could be exactly 18 or you could be older than 18, but you cannot be any younger. So we would want to use the greater than or equal to symbol. Your age could be greater than or equal to 18. Okay. Question number five is another one about solving inequalities. Can y'all tell that that's going to be important on the test tomorrow? 
So for this one, we, uh, we want to get y by itself. Again, this is on page 33. We get rid of the negative 3 by canceling it out with positive 3. That's going to cancel out. And then uh, different signs, we find the difference, which is 4. But we have more negatives, so y is less than or equal to negative 4. Uh, we wouldn't want to choose the ones that have negative 10 because that would be if it was same sign you find the sum, but it's not. And then if you look at D, this is one that could be easy to accidentally pick if you were going too fast and not really paying attention. That's not the same symbol that was in our problem, so we definitely don't want to pick that one. So we want to pick the one that has less than or equal to. Question number six is also found on page 28 because it's another real world equation. Now, the best thing is before you actually go down and look at your answer choices, you should solve the equation. So if we see multiplication over here, we want to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. That's going to leave us with x by itself on the right hand side. And then 60 divided by 3 would give me 20. So I like to know, even though the question's not asking what x equals, but if I know what x equals, then anytime I see an x, I'm just going to plug in 20 because that's only going to work in one of them. So if Ray had 3 quarters and his mother gave him 20, he wouldn't have 60 quarters. He would have 23 because it would be the 3 he had plus the 20 that his mom gave him. So that's not what's happening in ours. We're talking about multiplication up here. <clears throat> so it's not answer choice A. Answer choice B, he saves three quarters one week, 20 quarters the next week. So again, he wouldn't have 60. He'd have the three from the first week, the 20 plus from the second week. He's going to have 23 quarters. So that one also doesn't work. If he earns three quarters for each of the 20 chores he does, um, that would give him 60 because if you take the 3 times the 20 chores and that gives you 60 quarters. That also has that multiplication that we were supposed to have. So that one looks good, but I still like to make sure. So if Ray had 60 quarters and he spent 20 of them, he would have 40 left over because 60 minus 20 is 40. This one says he has 3 left over. So that doesn't make sense with our value of x. So yes, you want to be looking for like a word like each that means multiplication, but you also have to make sure it works with the number that you're using. That's a really good way to make sure you have the right answer. Okay, question number seven is found on page 29, modeling equations. So this first equation would be x plus five, because it has an x and then it has five positives next to it equals, over here we have 8. So x plus 5 equals 8. Remember that this is, you can think of x having a bunch of little siblings, and x just wants to be alone, right? So he's got to get rid of his little siblings. But equations are like balance scales. Whatever you do to one side, you have to make sure you do to the other side. So if I took away 5 on that side, I would also need to take away 5 on the other side. Whatever is left over is going to be your answer. So that means x equals 3. You can always go back and plug that in. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then this is also 8. So those are both going to be equal. On the bottom question, it says there's two x's, so that would be 2x equals, and then there's 10 negatives. So 2x equals negative 10. Think about these as being twins, right? And if there's something and that they're splitting, they're going to want to keep things even. So if there's two of them, you've got to get two equal groups of whatever these items are. Okay, so each of the twins get five of them. They're all negatives, so x equals negative five. And that makes sense because if this is negative five and this is negative five, that's a total of negative 10, which is what's over here. Okay, the last question. Donald cut a board into two smaller pieces. The total length of the board was 25.75 inches. One of the smaller pieces was 16 inches long. This situation is represented by the equation below. Find P, the length of the second piece. Mm -hmm. So all those words were kind of just, I don't want to say extra info. I mean, they are what the problem is about, but you really don't need to know all of that because they gave you the equation 
and they said find P. So we just want to know what P equals. So you just solve the equation like we would on page 30. And on page 30, it tells you you want to get P by itself. So we have to get rid of the 16. You can get rid of the 16 by subtracting 16 from both sides. Or you can think of that as positive 16 and negative 16, which is going to be zero pairs. So those are gone. Now over here, we have to line up our decimal points so that we can do the subtraction. 5 minus 0 is 5. 7 minus 0 is 7. We can't take 6 away from 5, so we're going to have to borrow. 15 minus 6 is 9, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So P equals 9.75. Okay, I hope that y'all are ready and you're going to do great on your test, and good luck.